Great hair. <laughs> I'm telling you, I, I feel like I should bring that mullet back. <laughs> do it. Do it. I, do I, it. I, I, I think I could. It. Yeah. But it's like true defin definition of a gentleman is like somebody who knows how to play the accordion but doesn't. It's like <laughs> the guy that can you grow could, the mullet uh, back. Don't let's could try the mullet, too. but you choose not to. Um, it's lovely <laughs> if you will explain. We've got drinks in front of us, but we're going to come to those a little bit yeah, later okay. on. And I think it's probably a wise thing to come to those last. Um, <laughs> because we've just had a warning about them. So we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. Mm -hmm. You say it, it's a blessed career. Um, I mean, you have had a ball, haven't you? Yeah. I'm having more fun now than ever. Are you? Because I think everybody I speak to who had great success young, you're kind of caught off guard by it. You're um, too focused on maintaining it. Yeah. Not really being mature enough to be in the moment. And then when you have... Uh, you know, blessings like I'm having now, yeah. at my old age, you, you really have a better opportunity to really grasp what's happening and really be in it and be mm. extra grateful. That's kind of what's happening right now. But you had, I mean, even though you were incredibly young when it all first started, you had some great mentors. You had Kenny Rogers, who was your mentor. Yeah. But it was Lionel Richie that recommended you to him initially. Well, it was Lionel Richie who gave me my first job yeah. in the music business. Um, singing background vocals on his first couple of solo albums. So next time you're in your car or at the pharmacy or wherever and you hear Lionel go, all night long, all night, that's me. No way. All night, yeah, that bit. Is it? Yeah. That's you're so never cool. going to forget that. that from no, now on forever. That it's on Wikipedia, you can look it up. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. And uh, it's funny because you say, you know, having a better time now than probably ever. Uh, there are things you do later in life that even you can't believe that you've actually done it, and that's working with Burt Bacharach. Yeah. Um, now he was, he, he was, I think he's 94 now. He's, he's 91 94 now. when you were working with him. Yeah. Wow. It, it was a lifelong dream of mine to write a song with him, and we not only wrote just the most beautiful song, I can say that because it's his music, mm. um, but we became great friends, so we talk regularly now. Um, he's such an inspiration mm -hmm. in that at 94 and with everything he's accomplished, he just wants to write more songs. He wants to write better songs. He's not interested in like just relaxing. And yeah, he's true. always working. He's always got something going on. Mm -hmm. And so when it comes to the new album, sort of deciding what to put on there, you just went, well, I'm going to do every genre that I love. I'm just going to go for it. Yeah. I was, uh, as a songwriter, I've had that amazing opportunity to work in every genre, you know, rock and pop and country and R&B and, and I love all that music. I think that I sort of, for the most part, subscribed to that myth that you should, as an artist, you kind of stay in a lane. Mm. And I thought on this album, why not? Mm. You know, I thought, what's the worst thing that could happen is that people who don't like me won't like me more. <laughs> you know, I think I could just go for whatever I want to do. Yeah, what, yeah to yeah. hell with it. Yeah. And, and what's great also is, uh, because I, I love the family tradition, um, it really is a thread, you know, so working with your dad, uh, um, um, starting at five, uh, your stuff, now working with your sons, songwriting yeah, so with lovely. your sons, that's terrific. I don't know that there's anything I've experienced. I mean, working with my father, who was an amazing orchestrator and arranger, and um, he did some TV shows with me in the beginning of my career. That was a real thrill. Mm -hmm. But to now be making music, the sing this single that's out now that uh, Radio 2 is playing so much, thank you, uh, is one of the several tracks I've, I created with one of my sons, Lucas. Mm -hmm. Lucas and I wrote the song together. He produced it. Um, I keep sending him the chart updates, and he gets very excited about it. Well, that's so but it's can you imagine what that's like for me to be uh, making music imagine. with my kids at this point? It's but also, it's, it obviously works, because you wrote one of the songs you wrote in 20 minutes, I think. Yeah. Yeah, we have a shorthand. You know, we, we are not just close as family members and great friends. You know, I'm, I feel like my sons are all my best friends, you know. Um, but there's a shorthand. We've, they grew up watching me make records, listening to me write songs, and they have their own skill set, which I now admire and want to tap into, so. You learn from them also. Um, you're going to Australia. I mean, that tour's completely sold out. You have yeah. a real connection there to, I think, particularly Perth as well, but here in the UK as well. And there's this big night at the Albert Hall. I'm so excited to be coming back to the yeah. Albert Hall. Next May, May 22nd, 2024. Yep. So get your tickets now. <laughs> no, I think seriously. they go on sale actually on February the 10th. Yeah, you might January, just Put it in your February diary, 10th, yeah. so pause. Yeah. But you, you guys here, especially in, in London, throughout the UK, um, 
it's one of those rare places in the world where there's loyalty. Mm. You know, there's fan loyalty where it's been 37 years or something mm -hmm. like that, you know? The first time I ever played here was at Ronnie Scott's and I got booed off the stage. No way. But it was all journalists, it was all critics. I didn't get booed, but they were just sort of were like. Yeah. Really? Yeah, it was rough. Crowd. But then a few months later, I came and played the Albert Hall. And that was like, oh, okay. Yeah. This is what it's like. Mm -hmm. I, um, I love the, as we've you know, talked about the people that you've worked with and written with, um, is, and you have this shorthand with your sons. There doesn't appear to be a shorthand with Keith Urban. Um, because. No. Uh, <laughs> And he, we're, he we're, likes it, then he hates your best best friend. Well, we're not best friends, but we've hung out a lot together, yeah. and we, you know, we are friends, uh, separate from collaborators. But Keith, and and you know, he would be the first to admit this or second it. He definitely has a um, a way a way about him. It's, it's not just with me. He gets really excited about something on the day that you're doing it, and then he starts to second guess it, and and sometimes you just have to keep pushing him mm -hmm. on like, remember what we loved about this? So I've, I've had three huge hits with him, but for, for those three songs, there were probably four or five other ones mm. that Definitely. I think are just as good that he at some point was like, I don't know. Just, uh. Well, you've got oh, one, one day longer. Uh, um, yeah, that's one of them. Yeah, actually. but he, but when you sent it to him and you'd written it with him, he couldn't remember ever writing it. <laughs> exactly. So we wrote that song for him very effortlessly. Um, and he was so into it on that Monday. And then Thursday afternoon, he was not into it anymore. So I thought, okay, whatever. And so when I was making this album, I f stumbled upon it. And I thought, I still love this song. So I wanted to make sure he was okay with me recording it. And I sent it to him. He went, I love this song and I have no <laughs> recollection of writing it. Uh, listen, it made it onto it's, the album. Uh, it's here. This is, uh, this is the one that we're, uh, we're talking about. Now we mentioned right at the very beginning, the drink. The drink. Mm. So this is, uh, I give credit to the great Sheila E. Mm -hmm. Sheila E was part of a band uh, with, that Ringo Starr took out in 2006, I believe. I was in the band, Billy Squire was in the band, Hamish Stewart was in the band, Rod Argent, Sheila E. And one day we got to Vegas I'm going in. and my voice was gone. So I wasn't able to sing. I thought I wouldn't be able to sing that night. She came to my room, she made me this drink. I call it the brew. It's lemon juice. A, a crushed ginger, powdered ginger, honey, and cayenne pepper. And that's the kicker here. Yeah, now here's the thing. Brian Adams once uh, texted me and said he had a gig and like, he said, I got a gig in four hours and my voice is gone. What's that stuff you drink? Mm. So I gave him the recipe. This is also used as a cleanse. Now for a uh. cleanse, you drink it. For your voice, you just sip it. And I forgot to tell Brian that. Oh, oh no. no! So he, 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 oh, Brian Adams. he could sing really well, but was terrified to hit the high notes. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> so let's, let's have a tiny, tiny sip. Cheers. That good? Mm. It's, not, it's not for the faint of heart. Cheers. Oh, I like that. Okay, but you can tell, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh my God. I can, it's that's got a heat. That your voice can be gone, and it, you just sip this for How much of that do you drink? I, I only drink it on the road, but I take sips of it throughout the day and during the show. And oh my gosh. After the show. Wow, that's a beauty. But I that make is so sure, strong. But I make sure to sip it. Yeah. And not drink it. <laughs> that comes with the warning, that drink. Um, but it thank tastes you like so it much. would actually put an end to a singing career. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Brian Bryant said. Are you trying to kill me? Yeah. Um, as we showed you, this is, uh, is, is the album. Um, can't wait to see you at the Albert Hall. Uh, that's brilliant. And uh, as Holly said, tickets go on sale on the 10th of February. Thank you. Thank Pleasure. you. Pleasure. Good to see you guys. And you too.